Hello and welcome to this video guide series about the Grandstream GWN7000 Wi-Fi routers. In this series, we will cover many aspects of deploying, configuring, and maintaining GWN routers so you can obtain the knowledge needed to manage and maintain them. So in this video, I will walk you through the initial configuration of the router to get it up and running. Before we get into the connection and configuration of GWN routers, I just want to quickly introduce the two Wi-Fi routers Grandstream currently has. And these are designed for small offices and remote workers. The first model is the Wi-Fi 6 compatible router GWN7062. It offers dual band Wi-Fi connections and it has four individual internal antennas. It includes an embedded controller that can manage up to 50 GWN access points. For wired networking, GWN7062 comes with 4 gigabit LAN ports and a gigabit WAN port. The LAN port number 4 can be set up to work as a WAN port in case you need to have a secondary WAN connection. A GWN7062 router can be set up to work as an IPsec or OpenVPN server. You can also use it as a client for the VPN protocols IPsec, OpenVPN, PPTP, and L2TP. The second model is the Wi-Fi 5 compatible router GWN7052, which comes with four individual external antennas. It has pretty much the same features as GWN7062, but with lower capacity. And there is only a single port for WAN connection. Deploying a GWN Wi-Fi router in a network is very straightforward. First, use the provided power supply to plug into an electric outlet. Then connect the router to the modem supplied to you by your service provider. So basically you take an Ethernet cable and you plug it into the WAN port of the GWN router and the other end you plug it into one of the Ethernet ports on the modem or the gateway, whichever you are using. To provide connection to your wired network, you plug a switch or a hub into one of the LAN ports on the GWN router. You can also connect a computer or an IP phone directly to any of the LAN ports. By default, all LAN ports are enabled on the GWN router. The LED lights on the GWN router tell you if it has power and if the interfaces are active and communicating. So the front panel of the GWN router has LED indicators for power and interface activities. So the LED light for an interface will always be off if there is nothing plugged into it. Flashing LEDs indicate there is activity on the interface. The LAN ports will have flashing white and the WAN port uses flashing blue. By default, Wi-Fi is enabled on the GWN router, so after the router powers up, the Wi-Fi LED indicator should have a solid white. The power indicator also uses its own patterns and colors as described here. GWN routers have an embedded web server that allows you to configure the device through a web browser. You can connect to the web interface of the router through Wi-Fi or wired connection. By default, the GWN router uses the IP subnet 192.168.80.0 and the subnet mask 24. When you connect a computer to one of the LAN ports of the router, it should get an IP address from that subnet. You can also connect a computer through Wi-Fi using the default SSID and Wi-Fi password. This information is printed on the barcode label. Just keep in mind that each router will have unique SSID and Wi-Fi password. Also, it is important to note that the default SSID and password will get overwritten when you add the router to the Grandstream Cloud Management Platform, GWN.Cloud. The SSID provisioned by GWN.Cloud will be GWN-Cloud, and you need to have access to your GWN.Cloud account to get the password for that SSID. To log into the web interface of the router, you just open a web browser and type in the IP address 192.168.80.1 in the search bar. So after you enter the IP address and hit enter, you will get the login page, and that is where you need to enter the login password which is printed on the barcode label. That same Wi-Fi password, we use it to connect to the default SSID and to log into the web interface of the router for the first time. So when you try to log in for the first time, it will prompt you to change the default password. So I'm going to enter a different password. 
Just make sure that the password is a strong password that includes letters, numbers, and special characters. Then save. So after you change the password for the first time, it will prompt you to use the quick internet configuration or you can skip it. So let's just take a look and see what kind of information is available under the quick internet configuration. So one of the options is you set the region and the time zone. I can change that one, for example, to Eastern time instead of central time. Next, there is the internet settings for the WAN port. So I'm just going to leave it as default and the SSID. We can just leave that one as a default. I'm going to show you later using the Wi-Fi configuration pages how to modify the SSID settings. So it will ask us to log in one more time. So after you log in, you will get the overview page, which displays various types of information in a dashboard uh, style for monitoring and analyzing the activity and uh, operation on the router. So this includes information about the interfaces, as well as a graph of the network traffic in real time. If we zoom in, we can see the LED indicators of the router to confirm the status of the interfaces. The dashboard also gives you information about the access points controlled by the router, as well as the clients connected through Wi-Fi and wired connection. And here it shows the notifications. For example, earlier we changed the root admin to log into the router. So it's going to provide us with an entry regarding that change. As we explained earlier, by default, the GWN router uses the IP address 192.168.80.1 with the port 443 port for HTTPS. If you need to make changes regarding the web access, like changing the password and the port number used for web access, you go to system settings, security management, enter the current password, then enter the new password, save the setting. By default, the router is using port 443 for web access. If you need to change that one, you can change it from here. Uh, there is also the option of web WAN port. So by default, if you try to log into the web interface from the WAN side, you will get blocked. So if you want to enable web access through the WAN port, you can check this option. SSH by default is enabled. Uh, another option is passwordless remote access because GWN router is supported on the GWN cloud. So when you add it to the GWN cloud, it provides you with an option for remote access. If you want to skip the authentication process, when you log in from GWN.cloud, you can enable this option. And basically what it does when you go to your GWN.cloud and you click on remote access, it will log in automatically for you to the web interface of the router. So when you go to system info under overview, it will show you some information like the system time, the Mac address, and also the system version, which is the firmware version. It will show you the model name of your router. So if you need to change the system time, we go to system settings, basic settings. So here I am using the Eastern time zone. If you happen to be on a different time zone, you can change it. From here. This is the default NTP server used by the router. If you have your own NTP server or if you want to use a different one, this is where you configure it. As I showed you earlier, the LED indicators on the router are enabled by default. If you want to turn off these LEDs, you can set it to always off or you can enable them based on a schedule that you define here. So you can create a schedule and you can for example, configure it during office hours or disable it during office hours. It depends on your requirements. Under the system info page, uh, you can verify the firmware version that is running on your router, which is the system version. To verify if you are running the latest firmware version, you can always go to the GrandStream website. So basically, go to GrandStream.com and under support, click on firmware, then it's going to show you with the list of the latest firmware versions. So you're going to look for your model. So we are using GWN 7062 and the latest version is 1.0.5.38. .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 so 
So that's the same version that I have here. So if you happen to be running an older version and you need to upgrade your router, first of all, I recommend that you read the release notes. Sometimes it has some information or some instructions that you need to follow. All right, so to upgrade your router, we go to system settings and then we select upgrade. You can use the manual upload of a firmware file and the way you do that, you go back to the Grandstream website. So we click on the latest version. It's gonna download the file in a zip format. So we need to unzip this format to get the binary file. So I'm just gonna open the folder. All right, so I come here. I'm gonna just say extract all to the same file. So now I have the file saved in this folder. To upgrade the router, we just go to upload firmware and we need to upload the bin file then just click on open to upload the file so once you do that the router will upload the firmware file and then it's going to start doing the upgrade process but since my version is the same as the latest version that's why it's prompting me with this message so i'm just going to say i know if you have the firmware hosted somewhere like you have an http tftp or an https server you can use the second option so basically if you are using tftp you're just going to include that if you have your tftp installed on a server internally you just enter the ip address there's option 43 and 66 uh, you can send actually the link for the firmware server path through your dhcp options uh, the next option is the check download new firmware at boot up. So this one is set to on. So every time the, the router reboots, it's always going to check whether it has the latest firmware version. And the file that it's going to check is the one that you have configured and that the firmware server has. The next option is detect new firmware version. So if you want to use that one, uh, you must have the firmware files available on your server, or you can simply use the Grandstream website which is firmware.grandstream.com so apply that one then save the change so if i come here and i click on the technic version it's going to tell me the current version is already the latest one there is also the option where you can schedule an upgrade so if you set it to on here it's going to ask you to enter a uh, schedule if you want to tell the router to check the firmware file on a weekly basis, you can set the time. For example, every Monday between midnight and midnight 30, it's going to check the URL that you have configured under the firmware server path if there is a new firmware. Or you can set a uh, time. So let's say on Sunday, nobody is in the office. I can choose Sunday and I can set the time. I can choose, for example, between 10 a.m. and 30 a.m. Save and apply. So when I set this uh, schedule on Sunday between 10 and 10.30, the router will uh, try to uh, upgrade to the firmware that is available under the Grandstream URL. So let me just close that. So after the upgrade finishes, you can always go back to the overview, system info, and check whether the system upgraded or not. So as I mentioned earlier, Wi-Fi is enabled by default on the router. Uh, if you want to make changes to the Wi-Fi settings, you just go to the Wi-Fi settings. Then we go to SSID. So each uh, router is configured with a unique SSID and a unique password. If you need to make changes to the default SSID, uh, you just go to edit and then you can enable or disable this SSID. You can also change the name or you can also change the default password. So in my case, I'm just gonna leave it on. If you decide to delete this one and create a new one, you can go to add SSID and then we set the option Wi-Fi to on to enable it and then we assign it a name. So if this is for the office, we just enter the name here so if you want to associate this SSID with specific VLAN, uh, you just enter the VLAN here. Currently, we don't have any VLANs created. The Grandstream routers provide dual band connection on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. 
if you decide to use one band over the other you can select that one from here or you can just leave it as a default once we create the name of our ssid then we just go to the wpa shared key and we enter the password that's going to be associated with that ssid if we go under device management uh, so since we're only using the router to provide wi-fi so that's the only device that is available then we just save and apply the changes now the office ssid is enabled and users can actually connect to that uh, ssid using the password that we just configured here our engineers at grandstream help desk can assist with any issues that you might run into while using grandstream solutions you can submit a ticket by going to helpdesk.grandstream.com Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check Grandstream YouTube channel for more videos.